Hey, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Johnny Finesse. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the video. Welcome back to the reaction. And today we're about to watch PS5 versus the Xbox Series X showdown. Hold up. Huh? My fault, y'all. Have my retainers in. But we're about to watch PS5 versus Xbox Series X showdown. With the both consoles coming out in a week or so. Who do you think is going to be the better console? Put that in the comment section down below. Tell me what you think. Is it going to be Xbox or PlayStation? Which one are you going to get? Put that in the comment section down below. Also, we on the road to 300 subscribers, so I need y'all to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, y'all, and the bell notification so you don't miss a thing again. Also, 90% of you guys that watch my videos are not subscribed. Please hit that subscribe button. We on the road to 300 subscribers, so I need y'all to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss a thing again. If you like the video already, thank you. I please I appreciate you. If you haven't, hit that like button. Smash that like button. Smash that like button. It helps out with our algorithm. But with that being said, let's get into it. It's a long the video. moment has come. The question, the uh, the the thing there. Everyone's asking me. It's all over the place. Next gen consoles. People are excited. Probably should be. Uh, it's not every year you get a brand new console like from either iPhone. Sony or Microsoft. Well, we have that happening this year. And so the question that's flying at me is, what should it be, Lou? Should I go for the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X? Now, I know there's also the Series S that's out there. I've done videos on it. But I think this is kind of, this is the showdown that people want to know about. The main objective of this video is just to give you a breakdown of the similarities, the differences, and also, thank goodness, we received a number of accessories as well. So we're gonna look at some of those things. We're gonna talk about external storage or expandable storage. We're gonna talk about the controllers. We just have, we can finally just put these two consoles in the same place and talk about this big decision you're going to make Facts. this holiday season Facts. and going forward into the next couple of years whether it's going to be the PlayStation 5 I'm or the both, Xbox though. Series X. Now, I have played both of these, playing late last night, playing games, trying to get to the bottom of it. So I'm coming at it from that perspective. I have been playing these, although I haven't tried out all the accessories. Okay, actually, you know what? I'm going to just push the accessories to the side for a moment. We got the PlayStation headset, nice little charger setup. Of course, we've got the camera as well, the high-end Xbox controllers. We also even have the adaptive controller. All right, so consoles themselves uh, this has been talked about so much the scale of the playstation 5 now honestly i don't think it's that big of a deal it does strike you immediately but you're going to get used to that uh, over time particularly since you can lay this one flat and i'm not gonna spend too much time on that but when you lay it down flat uh and you put it in a typical piece of entertainment furniture I don't think you're gonna be sitting there measuring it every day. You're just gonna kinda get on with your life. But it is worth mentioning that uh, Microsoft was able to fit uh, very similar processing power, very similar horsepower, similar uh, SSD performance and so forth. They were able to fit that inside of something smaller. So that's worthwhile. But in order to do that, they have a very, uh, what would you say, utilitarian design, single fan design up on top. It's actually reminiscent of me today old version mac pro which was just it just kind of well it was a cylinder but it was mm. a very similar cooling idea yeah i know he's talking the about the playstation side old, of things old Max. it's old, uh, it, they have a similar Max. large fan One approach to ones. cooling which apparently is going to get smarter over time and depending on the different games that you're playing playstation will sell a non-disc drive version you see the uh I'm getting the disc the drive without over the here disc. They're going to sell a digital only version, whereas Xbox, on the Xbox side, if you want the top tier the specification, disc. you're going to get it with the disc drive, whether you like it or not. And then they're also going to sell you the Series S, which is their digital only version, but it will lack some of the performance that the Series X has. So a slightly different approach there. The front of the unit here, you can see on the PlayStation 5, we have our USB type C connector, a USB type A and a couple of buttons. Over here, we have one USB-A port, a sync button, and your disk drive power button here. So we have one more USB port on the front of 
the PS5 compared to the Xbox Series X. As we turn these guys around and check out their ports, you'll notice once again, we have many similarities. Two USB type A ports, a, a, a LAN port is on both of them. We have our connection for power, both have the integrated power bricks, no more external power bricks, that's a fantastic thing. We have our HDMI out on each of the two units, and then this is our major difference on the back of these two devices. Uh, Microsoft has chosen to go for this form of expandable storage. It is proprietary. This is a one terabyte card. Now it's made by Seagate. It is very fast storage and it needs to be for either of these systems because one of the major benefits with this next gen gaming is around your speed within the interface and also loading games. The load times are drastically reduced even on some of your current favorites. So in order to expand the storage and launch games from that storage, you need to have fast storage. Now, this is not cheap, $220. And the thing is, since it's proprietary, yeah, it's presumably it's gonna hold at that price and not be discounted too frequently because there's no other players in the marketplace that are making these. So that could be seen as a downside. Then on the upside of it, this is incredibly compact. It strikes me as being more durable or portable than the uh, SSD expansion that you could do on the PlayStation 5. So it's, it's a little bit more versatile. Pop it in, take it to a different system, take it out, throw another one in. It's, uh, it's just a little bit more versatile, but you probably in the long run will end up paying a little bit more for that when compared to the SSD expansion yeah, you would, which you install actually straight into PlayStation 5. more and more memory over time, 5. just like it did with the Xbox. Now, more this unit memory. can also be placed on its side. It's just such a simple <clears throat> form, a simple shape, a rectangle. Now, depending on, again, what type of furniture or setup you have, maybe that makes a big difference to you. I've had both of these units in studio now. It's a big studio, so not just I'm not cramped for space or anything like that, but I've had them both in studio, and I quickly forget the fact that this one is far bigger than that one. The thing that gets talked about more frequently actually is the styling, which is quite a bit different. You have the simplest form possible, and like you have an PS, incredibly PS5 complex style. That form is here cool. with this, this tapering and these various shapes, if and then the lighting that, that pops be, up on the inside of the frame over That's here, and the black and white. Uh, motif. Yeah, I'll just money. say I feel like this feels a little bit newer to me. Yeah. Uh, I like simple forms. I could totally get behind this one too. Yeah. When it comes to styling, I don't think I would make my decision because exclusively the way you're not on really that. Be looking at it when you're However, the game. I think if this thing so. is sitting in your living room, it's probably going to command a little bit more attention yeah, from your that. pals than this one will, if that matters to you. Now I'm going to bring over the controllers because this is the other area that many people have focused on. And it's funny, I was talking to Will earlier. I oh, was they thinking, got grips on the back too? Man, That's nice. when it comes to a new console, which part of it do you actually interact with when, when we're talking about hardware? Yes, this thing is doing all the important stuff, but really, this is what you touch and hold. This is, this is your console, at least when you're sitting on the couch. This is, this is what you interact with. And so from that standpoint, it, it was a little bit can I say a little bit less exciting on the Microsoft side because this thing is so similar to the previous generation controller. No, that's a fact. That said, there's some nice compatibility stuff that comes along with that. By sticking with the old design, if you if you go ahead and interchange older controllers from the Xbox One with this one, it's not really a big deal. They will work, they're compatible, and uh, also the other way around, if you want to use this with so an older console. Blessed you. There's something nice Bless about that, that us. you don't need to replace all your controllers. F uh, full disclaimer here, you will not be able to use PlayStation 4 controllers with PlayStation 5 games at all. So just to be clear, you're probably going to need a whole new outfit of controllers, and like I said, that could be a little bit more expensive. That said, I've been playing these things. I have played these consoles, and so have a number of other people. And this controller ends up becoming the story of the whole thing. Particularly when you boot up just the demo game that's on here, the Playroom uh, app, which sort of utilizes all these features. Now, I don't know if all the game developers are going to come along and actually uh, no, utilize what fire, this thing though, can like... do. That shit but fire. when you see it and feel like it, cool you realize that's something that new. Stuff Very that the precise Xbox haptic stuff happening because they've got all these various motors. And so 
I was playing the new Spider-Man game and I'm on the subway and it's I'm feeling the bumps coming from different places. Then within the Playroom application game demo on here, you get a sense for what they're doing with the triggers, which is bananas. It's I've never experienced something like that before with such resistance and 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 such a uh, such a feedback where the trigger will change the amount of force necessary depending on where you're at within the actuation. It's, I mean, it's very bizarre, difficult to explain. You can blow into the microphone and it, it, it gives you a, a particular vibration. Of course, it's also got the motion stuff associated with it. So the controller, I, I mean, it's hard to, to, to not come to the conclusion that this is the more advanced controller. Now, both of them got an upgrade to USB type C, which is a huge thing for me. Yeah. I mean, I was so over the micro thing with all the busted cables and the shoddy connection points. So that's a bonus, no matter which platform you go, go for uh, USB type C. Now, granted, this one is fully rechargeable. The controller that ships with the Xbox Series X is a double uh -huh. A setup, which seems again, a little bit odd in 2020. I'm sure there's some people out there that like that, but if you want to take it a step further, you just go out and maybe you grab the Elite model, which that brings us to this moment as we move buy through this comparison. Now, I promise there's going to be gameplay. Yeah. I have a lot to say, particularly around the Spider-Man experience here on the PlayStation, because that is really one of your uh, only next-gen exclusives that you're gonna have at launch to play with. So I've been playing the Miles Morales game over here and then booting up some older titles like Forza on the Xbox, but now at 4K, now at 60 frames on a beautiful OLED display, it's a whole different experience. Excuse this me. is the well, Elite Series fault, yeah. 2. It's a good looking package. It's a good looking controller optimized for you. Adjust thumbstick tension and select preferred thumbsticks and D-pad. So. This is another level of configuration. This okay, is not cheap, controller. though. 180 US dollars. My goodness, the Xbox Series S is 299. This is almost 200. It's wild, but it gives you a lot of stuff over here. Inside the package, I mean, look at the configuration, thumbsticks, carrying case, and so forth. So, I, I mean, this is some kind of points in Microsoft's direction for offering up this first party option Granted, if you wanted some of these features like the paddles and so forth on PlayStation, you can expect some third-party manufacturers to do custom versions of this controller. I'd expect to see that fairly soon, if not already. All right, nice little carrying pouch here. You can take this on the road like a real professional. Look at that. Oh, wow, and you can charge it from within the case, Kirk. You didn't know wow. that. You didn't know that. So it's protected, but it's also charging through the pass-through. And I think everything is inside that package. Oh, we can, never mind. We got some stuff out of the package right now, including some paperwork over here. That simple stuff gets you up and running. Uh, that's an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate code. It's a 14-day Xbox Game Pass Ultimate trial for whoever wants to use it. You just got to pause the video and be quick. All right. So let me put that stuff down there. This is your cable. This is like a nice braided cable to go with this controller right here. And it looks pretty long Imagine too. Imagine if you won that, that Again, like crazy. I said, on the micro USB side, I was so sick of it. Busted so many cables over the years and it just is not a satisfying connection. On the other hand, type C, yes, thank you very much. So this is the cable that comes with it. It almost feels like a, a cable for a gaming mouse or something like that. And then inside the carrying case, we unzip. Woo! And Ooh. look at all the goods in there. This is a substantial a nice controller. I'm feeling metal on the back of it with the paddle buttons over here. Again, interchangeable. You can uh, make your modifications back here. Rechargeable unit. This is all cool to the touch. Whatever material they're using here, I guess these are metal. That's pretty nice. And then again, we'll do our Xbox connection point. We'll do our USB type C connection point there. Um, now, the thing about this, the grip right away gets you. This is a rubberized, if your hand, if you're a competitive type and your hands get a bit sweaty in that, 
you know that end game what a war zone scenario yeah this is gonna stay grippier no matter what's going on with your hands that is a real rubberized grip comparative to this this has texture to it but it's just inherently a little more slippery it's a fact the these the thumbsticks feel far more substantial see these are lighter whereas this is i feel like i've got a tiny bit more precision over there i can put different thumbsticks on there so check it out we have of course the standard xbox thumbstick we have this one which is uh well it's still a concave but it's a slightly flatter unit without a ring in the center i kind of like that we've also got the i believe it's called convex which is this is a popular choice once again some people in those first person games do, doing the shooting and whatnot find more precision with something like this this has rings inside of it as well so we have a number of options here let's see oh and then what oh that's cool i did not realize this what what happened that's just for shipping that's incredible if that's just for shipping kirk's telling me to rip it off he's right that's just for shipping this little microfiber alcantara type deal just for shipping wow okay i just realized something about this package you this little base unit magnetically sits over here and that pass through goes to the usb port on the back of this little charge dock so actually when you drop this in it's charging right away that's so cool that is very cool this thing looks amazing yes this is amazing is great, this thing is super product. high quality now you can remove that's this obviously product, and that's just have your product. charge dock uh live somewhere else like this outside of the case if you're not carrying it so it's a nice little place to charge up your controller so you won't even have to be inserting and removing your cable that's going to fly right into this little magnetic charge base all right the other thing i like about this package it keeps all your things together all your little accessories this tool is for swapping out your uh, different attachments and then there's also you've also got your uh, classic type of d-pad as an option if you prefer depending on the type of games that you play and all this stuff sort of fits back in here now something i'm noticing is uh, the different thumbstick attachments you don't you don't get two of each so you you kind of decide here depending on which thumbstick you're gonna mod are they both you can mod both like this so you could have one of these and and one of these you could have a taller thumbstick on on one and then maybe you want to have your convex on the other and these things they just swap in so easily these are your flatter units Ooh, those are nice i might go with those but anyway very cool super configurable super customizable yes it has a crazy high price tag but for those that take their gaming seriously by the way, these, if you have no experience with like a scuff controller, you map these to buttons that would typically be on the front. So then you don't need to remove your thumb from your second thumbstick in order to go hit these buttons. You stay here and I'm triggering things in the back, whatever you might want to map it to, whether it's crouch or if you want to throw a grenade, it's completely up to you. But that is very cool. So I'm going to give microsoft some points for at least having that option even though it's uh, it's really kind of a different thing because this is uh quite expensive compared to the console price yeah this shit is expensive, and on the though. playstation side something similar will that likely expensive. exist but it will come from a third party but there is your elite <laughs> controller now let's flip over to an accessory we have here for the playstation this is the playstation headset official pulse 3d wireless headset now they've done these in the past you can see on the side here compatible with playstation 5 this will also be compatible with playstation 4 and a playstation vr headset it's a little wireless adapter to go with it 12 hours of charge this is just a simple get you up and running headset for your ps5 uh, okay 
paperwork. I like the suspended headband as well. These tend to be quite comfortable. All right. Oh, they Sony headphones. So, so we have our work, USB adapter that, for wireless transmission. We have our USB type C to type A cable. And there's also a mini jack cable included to use these in a wired fashion if you choose to or if you need to. This is the headset. Of course, the, uh, the entire aesthetic here, the motif, it fits in quite well. You have the whole package going on. A very deep ear cup as well which uh, I'm a fan of because, you know, it lets the ear uh, sit in there comfortably and gives you a decent seal, seal you off from the rest of the world, some passive noise cancellation. Plenty of controls over here on the side, actually. Yes, yeah, a lot. Game and chat, off and monitor, volume up and down, a dedicated mute switch, Type-C connection for power and charging. There's your mini jack connector over there. And the power switch is definitely a switch and not a button. I kind of like that. Less likely to hit it accidentally. Uh, and then otherwise, yeah, I guess it's uh, time for a quick fit. Ooh, all right. So they're not the most isolating experience ever. However, they are crazy lightweight. Like I could wear those for a very long time and uh, forget that they're there. So and this is, uh, is going to be a popular choice for people picking up the PlayStation 5. You want to have that first party integration. You want to have that. Uh, well, Sony has a good history with headphones anyway. Some of my yeah, favorite so headphones like... that exist right now are from Sony. So I don't doubt yeah. that they've executed here as well. Now, the next thing that they sent over is a controller charger, dual sense charging station. Uh, this is obviously a, a big convenience thing. Charge up two controllers, have a place to put them. Uh, you're less likely to lose them. They, they just always go into charge dock. There's a click in design. You can free up your USB port. See the little thumbs up there on the package? Free them up and charge two controllers at once. We have a Willy Do update. The headset is a hundred bucks and this charge station is 30 bucks and i presume he's talking usd once again all right so here is the charge station we have our power brick pretty standard power brick two prong power adapter long enough to place behind a cabinet in your entertainment setup and then this is your dual controller charger i actually only have one controller here at the moment but it'll work the same way this is cool the way they've done the design so your power brick is actually going to connect in the bottom here like that but then like look how flat it creates so it stays flat. wow that's nice see what i'm saying here that's nice Very that's nice. real nice and again when it comes to the look of everything it goes together quite nicely everything matches we grab everything. our controller and we slap it on there and it clicks and that's the end of it. And this is super simple. Wow. 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 Would magnets have been nicer? Yeah, maybe. But I could get used to this. It's a $30 accessory and it does free up those USB ports. And it's also, from a visual perspective, kind of a nice look to it when you have the console sitting there and then you have your controllers charging beside it, but also kind of being presented. So you can, uh, I don't know, you can appreciate the controller as well as opposed to just having it sit on the table so that's a kind of nice little accessory and there's some cool attention to detail on how this thing tapers in similar to how you see that through line there from a design perspective they bring the taper of the actual console into the charger very cool that is very all right cool. the last playstation accessory is the hd camera 1080p hd capture capture every unmissable moment in sharp full hd picture quality so what are they they're thinking because you're doing the game streaming now on your playstation aggressive 60 dollars usd for this accessory this is see it. similar unboxing experience to the charge dock here is the camera and the look of it it all fits together quite nicely so that looks pretty. How does it stand up? Is this a sticky? Oh, cool. So 
So they've done a design here similar to a webcam where yeah, I suppose you could kind of prop that on a display itself, but you can also arrange it in such a fashion to kind of work like a mini little tripod. That's cool. All right, the last accessory is back on the Xbox side. This is their adaptive controller. It's really unique in the industry. The whole concept here what is, is greater accessibility to gaming for people who may not find it all that easy or just can't interact with a traditional style controller. Wow. What? Now, it's important to note that this will work on the Xbox One. This is not exclusive to the Series X. And they put this out a little while ago, but it is a differentiating uh, characteristic when you're considering these what? consoles that this is even an option on the Microsoft side. Sony doesn't make something like this. If you check out the back of this thing, it is incredibly comprehensive. Y, X, B, A, pretty much everything that would be otherwise on your controller can be plugged into here as external units and separate buttons. Now, is it going to be the exact same experience as a controller? No, it, it, that's not really the point. The point is accessibility and at least offering up some type of control option for individuals who may not be able to interact with a traditional controller. I can imagine if you were a kid, that would be a big deal to you. Uh, this looks like it charges or connects over USB type C as well. There's a sync button. We have a USB type A port over what? here for what looks like your right thumbstick. What? And then over on this side for your left thumbstick, there's also a dedicated uh, audio jack for a headset as well. That's Power trippy. port on the back. And then of course, as mentioned, you can interface with all kinds of external control buttons and so forth through these ports on the back. It also, look at this, they give you various mounting points here. 1024, quarter 20, and 1024 again for mounting this thing to some sort of a screw mount or plate so that you can position it with more customization as well. So they gotta make games that is for a that. cool thing they that have Microsoft to make games has that, that have doesn't to. exist on the Sony side, at least not a first have party to. product. Have have also, like, this will work on Windows and the previous generation Xbox. I think we've done it. I think that uh, I think that just about wraps up the physical comparison of the two units. And I'll just bring them together once again for scale. But we're about to now head to the TVs, of course, and we'll actually do some gameplay and compare how they operate, compare the interface a little bit, and just compare. All right, from looking at these, from looking at these, Tell me what you think. Which one looks better in the comment section down below? But obviously the PS5 looks better than than this. But we going but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. What matters is how they run. And we're about to see that now. If you made it this far, send me a like button. Hit me a like button. Smash the like button. Compare the overall speed of the two. Does that am I allowed to do all those things? <laughs> Goodness me, goodness gracious, I tell you. Need the PlayStation 4 Spider Man. Yeah. This is a Miles Morales game. It is one of the few exclusive titles for next gen gaming at the moment. And this is not my first time playing it, I've been playing it. Uh, you do notice a difference shadows reflections lighting this is the stuff you expected to see but also in detail but the other thing that i noticed your display matters oh 4k oh 60 frames yeah it's great but the display has to output so you can appreciate so i mean what do i have i have 77 inch what do i have i have oled over here you need to start thinking about your display as you're thinking about next gen because otherwise it could be a waste. If you got 1080 and some old equipment, it's no good. It's not no gonna cap. be worth it. No cap. Uh, the other big immediate thing to talk about is load times and snappiness around the interface. Everything is quick. Everything is, well, it's a generation ahead. I, honestly, even beyond the, uh, the, the gameplay itself, just the in and out of games, you do notice that difference in load times, in load up screens, things like this, switching between apps and so on. So I'm just gonna, let me just, I just gotta beat at least this group of people. 
just gonna beat this group of people real quick. And you gotta do these, you gotta pull those finishers, man. It's very important over here. You gotta be dodging. It's a lot of, it's a big dodging thing in the Spider-Man game, you know? Like I have a gun? Oh God, this is not good. Finisher is big. That's you need really it. Nice. You gotta finish these dudes off. I'm, I, I wiped them out, all right? Look at this. Nobody here. That's what I really want. That's what wiped I really out. want. The PS5 for the Spider-Man. Okay, so that's good. I mean, look, Spider-Man is sort of the headline exclusive here. Uh, I know that's a lot of people are interested in it. But funny enough, this Astro Playroom game... I'll play that too. ...is kind man. of... It, this is preloaded on a system when you buy it and it does a really good job of giving you a taste of what could be in the future with this console which is a big part i mean these consoles they sit around you have them for four years five years in some cases this is very loud and uh, and so game developers this is opening up opportunities for them to take advantage specifically of this unusual controller and the sensors and various mechanics that are inside of it. <laughs> oh, the zipper. So. <laughs> Bam. I'll do the Motion same thing too. Motion control as well in the controller. As soon as I get the game. And also the resist, the uh, resistance on the trigger, which is dynamic. Oh, deadly. <laughs> so there's a lot of, there's room to grow as far as utilization of the controller for upcoming software upcoming titles that, remind, that game reminded the, me of the crash playroom Bandit. app kind of gives you a taste of it the way they implemented this from a mechanical perspective if you see the controller tear down is wild and it could be really cool in upcoming shooter style games where uh you could possibly utilize it now on the xbox side i feel like playing forza on this display oled big enough and with the new with the new system, the Series X, I noticed a big improvement. So this is the game I want to showcase over here. And let me. Oh, by the way, the controller, the weight of it, man, this thing feels real professional. I'll tell you what. I'm using the Elite controller. I'm in an event. This is an early, you know, early part of the game event. It should be easy, but I still haven't finished playing that game. That's the only game I didn't finish. I got bored oh, of it. Oh, I'm in first. You see, I told you it's you... early in the game. I ain't gonna... As soon as you get the game after 30 minutes of playing it, you got a lot of exotic cars already. It's like, you know, like about a million dollars. Like, what the fuck? What? What? Like, we don't start with like like bad cars. I like to start with bad cars and gradually work my way up because it's like when you get to the fast cars, it's like you can't go faster. You can't go faster. And it's like, on top of that, you don't even need to buy cars anymore. Because you got a fast car already. Why do I need to buy more cars? It gets boring. And I'm still driving like a maniac. Keep it on the road, man. Hey, I don't have to. Look, I'm in first, man. It's more important I keep the keep those RPMs going. It's more important. I got the real, real drive. I got the old school muscle car. You can select a few different starter cars. I mean, it gets better than this. In fact, when you first boot up the Forza game, for those that are... Uh, unfamiliar they give you a mclaren senna out the gate then they take it away from you it's fairly rude but anyway i'm not going to complain because i just got an easy first place see that will that's an easy first place <laughs> so he listen says the tv factor these two things go hand in hand if you appreciate the finer things if you appreciate an increased frame rate and a higher resolution well then you need the tv to work in tandem to actually deliver that to you what's your tv setup looking like because that's a huge factor and so be prepared if you step into the next gen to start thinking about your next gen tv as well because i'm sitting here playing 4k 60 on 77 inches and then i'm appreciating 
but in certain circumstances, even the, the gears game that's over here it will, will even go up to 120 frames if you're playing a multiplayer. So really start to think about your display as you think about your next gen console. It ultimately, it still comes down to software. As much as we've done this comparison, we looked at the hardware, we compared the controllers, the bells and whistles, as I just said, it still comes down to the software, which games you're gonna play, which games matter to you. And that's one place where maybe at the moment, PlayStation has a bit of an advantage, even though that's why I booted up Forza over here. It's an old Forza, but I'm trying to at least showcase something that's exclusive on the Xbox side. The PlayStation, for me, from a styling perspective, feels a little bit more futuristic. I've been a PlayStation guy, got many PlayStation 4s at home. But actually, my message here is that these two things are both uh, in line with one another. That these two things are both a similar improvement on the previous generation of console experience. And so therefore, you really, I mean, you can't go wrong. And who knows, maybe one of them is hard to find. You end up picking up the other one and so on. Uh, you will need to know uh, and care about where your friends happen to be because not all games are going to be cross-platform from that perspective. But anyway, there you have it. It is a comparison. It is a versus mode. If you're going to force me to choose because I know you're going to, then I'm going to go ahead and take the PlayStation. Uh, this, there's something about the styling. Uh, I've also been a fan of the Naughty Dog though. games in the past, so I want to be uh, capable of having those at launch immediately. And I just feel it's it's a little bit more ambitious from a, from a styling approach where you feel it's like a you're new holding something futuristic. Whereas it's the a new Xbox feel. That's the same feel. I feel you. I really feel But if all you're going to do is boot up the next COD when it comes out, I don't know how much that matters. And on the Microsoft side, you grab this controller and you do sort of feel like a professional. So anyway, I picked, all right? And and I'm going to say I will pick the Xbox because I already have an Xbox. I play on Xbox. My fans play on Xbox, so I got to pick Xbox. Then I'm getting a PS5 right after. But if you made it this far in the video, you obviously like my videos. So you obviously should subscribe. So I need you to hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 300 